This video is going to look at biological molecules. Biological molecules are molecules that are made by living organisms. They all contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And they all originate from um, plants and photosynthesis and other producers, um, ways of producing biological molecules eventually. Um, other elements that are included in biological molecules include nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, iron, sodium, magnesium, potassium and various other ones. The first group we're going to look at are the carbohydrates. All contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And there are three layers of complexity in carbohydrates. You have simple sugars, um, which include glucose, fructose and galactose. You have complex sugars, maltose, lactose, sucrose as well. And then complex carbohydrates like starch, cellulose and glycogen. Simple sugars include glucose, galactose and fructose, as we saw before. And simple sugars um, can form complex sugars uh, by bonding with each other. So, glucose and a glucose molecule, a glucose and a galactose molecule, and glucose and fructose molecule together make new molecules which have different names. A glucose and a glucose form a maltose, a glucose and a galactose form a lactose, which is found in milk, and glucose and fructose produce sucrose, which is uh, plant sugars. Complex carbohydrates are polymers of glucose, and the way they're organized makes the different um, types of complex carbohydrates, so starch, cellulose, and um, uh, glycogen. So glucose is one molecule, you get hundreds of these joined together into a long chain, and you end up with a complex carbohydrate like starch. With biological molecules are the proteins, and we'll see the enzymes in more detail later. Um, proteins consist of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen and usually have um, sulfur as well. And they are made out of amino acids and there are 20 different types of amino acids. And proteins can be structural or functional and it depends on the sequence of amino acids as we will see in a minute. So here we have the 20 different amino acids and those different amino acids are different in structures and will interact differently with each other and differently with the environment. So the different different amino acids will behave in a different way chemically. And every protein won't have all 20 amino acids. Um, it, proteins can be hundreds of amino acids long, but they don't all have to have all, all 20 in them. And within that particular protein, they can be arranged in a particular sequence. And the sequence they form in a protein is de determined by the DNA sequence of the gene that codes for that particular protein, as we'll see in a later chapter. So let's have a look at an example of how protein structure works. So I'm putting six amino acids here, six amino acids there, and we'll just get rid of the other ones. And as we can see, these proteins are the same length, but they have a completely different structure. If we're starting from the top, then the, there's a black amino acid instead of a um, teal amino acid, there's a purple amino acid, and then a pink amino acid, and so on. Um, that different sequence will result in a different shape. And a different shape protein can have a different function. So let's have a look at how that works. So the amino acids interact with each other, so the different amino acids will form bonds, ionic bonds and hydrogen bonds between each other, and they will also interact with their environment, whether there's water or not. And that produces a very specific shape that is particular to that particular protein. So let's say this one bends up into this kind of arch kind of shape, whereas this one forms a right angle, and they look completely different, and that's due to their shape. And those different shapes are specific for the protein's function. And if the amino acid sequence changes in any way, the protein will often no longer be functional, which is how mutations can affect the, um, the, the function of the uh, proteins inside the cell and why genetic diseases can cause genetic diseases. The final group are the lipids. Uh, lipids uh, are oils and fats. Oils are generally plant-based, fats are generally animal-based. Uh, lipids contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And one use of lipids in the body are cell membranes, other uses are energy storage. Uh, lipid structure, you have a glycerol head, and to this glycerol head you have three fatty acids attached, and that forms a lipid. Um, now different lipids can be saturated or unsaturated, you may have heard of saturated fat and unsaturated fat. In a saturated fat, inside the fatty acids, the carbons all have as many hydrogens attached to them as they can. So carbon can form four covalent bonds, 
to make a long chain, um, they have two bonds to a carbon and then the other two bonds to a hydrogen. In an unsaturated fat, some of the carbons will have double covalent bonds with each other. So instead of having two hydrogens attached to a carbon, they will have one hydrogen attached to the carbon and the other three bonds are used uh, for, car for carbon bonds. Um, unsaturated fat take up more space because there's a kink in the um, fatty acid tail and as a result their membrane stays more fluid and as a result they're um, generally seen as healthier because they don't form clots as easily as saturated fats.